The World Juniors so far have been absolutely wild, and in the quarterfinals, Canada faced off against Czechia and had a nightmare of a loss. And honestly, it's become one of Canada's most embarrassing losses in World Junior history. But really, when we look at how this team has been performing, it might not be all that surprising. But make sure you watch till the end as we dissect every part of this game to see how this even happened. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new for more World Junior content and hockey content all year round in 2024. Now, in this quarterfinal match, in the first half especially, it was very even and at times was favoring Czechia as well. But a few minutes into the first, even though Canada had a few opportunities, this goal would really break it as it was Stanzel, who would end up getting the game-winning goal, breaks the ice and makes it 1-0. But just a few minutes later, with Czechia already up 1-0, they give them a penalty shot. Dominic Ramon gets in a really good opportunity here. Thankfully for Canada, though, Matthias Rousseau keeps them within one. But the bleeding would continue as Czechia would continue to pound shots. Canada not even getting one shot since the Czechia's first goal. And Czechia would continue to cycle in the offensive zone. Sabavalov an interesting shot there. And then they continue right there on the point. It's Chiboka and it's 2-0 Czechia. And it's kind of sad to watch this one, especially Russo making a great save on the penalty shot before. This is definitely a softy, and we've seen a few softies really since I made that video talking about him and his amazing performance versus Finland and what we saw before. And really, it was one of the main reasons for the downfall here. A horrible goal to give up, and now it's 2-0 after the first. Now, Canada would spark a little bit of life here in the second. An incredible chip play up to Matthew Wood, and he absolutely snipes it, doing what Matthew Wood does best, getting into scoring position and letting her rip. And you can start to see a little bit in that second period how they were able to show some life, starting to get back a little bit, starting to put some shots on net. Czechia was letting them get a little bit of opportunities, but still, even before this play, they had a great opportunity and just barely weren't able to score. A great play by Rousseau, but that's able to lead to a Canada goal. But Michael Robel was fantastic in this game, and Canada gets another great opportunity. Celebrini trying to wrap around right there to Wood, trying for his second of the game, but just barely can't. This shift was especially good by Cato, though, with three minutes to go in the second. They get some traffic in front. Potra is able to get it to Furlong from the point, and he just blasts it. A simple hockey play, but Canada needed more of that, and now it's tied 2-2. Now, going on to the third period, it was started off by a fantastic chance by Brain Jaeger again, right off the post, just barely, and it gets, this game's still tied somehow, some way. The third one continued chugging along. Canada continuing to put so many pucks on net. This opportunity by Geeky will really sting as well. With two minutes to go in the third, what a crazy chance just in front of Robble. Again, another big stop. And then this game continues to grind down, but with 11 seconds to go, Czechia enters the offensive zone. They just barely put it on and off of Oliver Bonk's stick, Czechia with the 3-2 lead. The game had been building and building, and Canada had been looking so much better in the second half, building up opportunities in the third, just not able to get anything going. But then Czechia with a ball buster of a goal with 11 seconds to go. But that hard work in the offensive zone, just putting a shot on net, the simplicity there in Czechia's game lends to a win in the end, and Canada is completely stunned. Now, first things first, we got to give credit where it is due to Czechia and how they were able to perform in this game. They were stupendous. And I also want to give a special shout out to Michael Robble. Now, tournament wide, Robble hasn't been the best in the world. I think it was Finland that he didn't have the greatest performance for, but he came up when he needed to. And against Canada, had some stupendous saves versus them in key moments, especially in that third period as Canada was roaring. As they were really getting going, Robble was standing tall, literally six foot six, 209 pounds. And you could tell in the way that Canada was playing, they were trying to be perfect, trying to snipe corners, trying to get as perfect as they can with these opportunities. And Robble just wasn't letting anything happen. But with that size that Robble brings, he forces the other team to make that type of adjustment. And Canada just wasn't able to in the end. But I was just so impressed by Czechia to be able to get a game like this done, and it was perfect. It was exactly how they drew it up, and they executed it perfectly. Sure, they're going to get outshot by Canada, but in the end, that didn't matter. The simplicity in Czechia's game was really able to lend to success compared to a Canadian team that was just a little bit too fancy for their own good. But then we go on to Team Canada, man, and this is just a disaster class of a tournament. 
It's kind of embarrassing for Canada that in back-to-back -back years, they had to rely on a 17-year-old to generate a lot of their offense. Sure, in this game, he didn't end up getting a point, but I still thought he looked pretty solid. Obviously, there was players like Wood that ended up getting the production there. But at the same time, the fact that Celebrini by far led the team in scoring. He was the only player to be of above a point per game in this tournament, especially considering, you know, some of those games that they would have versus lesser opponents. The fact that they only had one player above a point per game, I think is really telling. We were coming into this tournament wondering how Canada's top end talent would do if they had enough top end scoring to be able to get it done. And that was a big reason why I predicted them to win the bronze medal in the end was because I just didn't think that that game breaking talent compared to the Swedes or the US's, especially on forward. And man, I didn't think that their top end guys would be this bad. Besides Macklin Celebrini, a lot of the guys that should have been top sixers mainstays on the top end of this team forward wise were just awful. Now let's go through some of these top end guys that to me were extremely disappointing and first up it has to be Matthew Savoy. This is in my opinion the most disappointing player maybe of the entire tournament. Now I didn't expect him to get 20 points or anything but I expected him to be around maybe 8-10 points in this tournament. Look solid, look good but he was just awful. One assist in four games. He just was, I mean, the, he was the epitome of, of overthinking for this Team Canada roster. He was the player that was overthinking the most, the player that was trying too much and just trying to be way too creative when the game just didn't really need that in the end. Savoy was just awful, man, and it sucks to see because he should have been one of the most important players for this Canadian roster, but in the end, he ended up as one of their worst players. You also got Jordan Dume, and I've never really been a huge Jordan Dume guy, but I think this tournament really did show his weaknesses. Just a real lack of speed and quickness with his skating and the physicality. He'd get knocked off the puck and just completely give up on the play. You see in five games, one goal, one assist, two points. That one goal that he got was just an absolute gimme that was given right to him. But here's the thing. I really didn't expect too much out of Dume, but even this tournament I thought was like his one opportunity to really show. I mean, against junior competition, he's dominated in the QMJHL. We know he can dominate against junior competition, but the fact that he was able to put up this performance against junior competition, that's rough, buddy. Then you got Frazier Minton, who serving as Canada's captain was also extremely disappointing. You can see a little bit better production for three points in five games, but considering the opportunities he was given, how many, uh, how much ice time he was given, the plays he was given, the goals that he could not bury, Minton was one of the most snake bitten players of this tournament. But at the same time, you're Canada's captain. There's no excuses here. And I think his play was also pretty sad to see. You also got Connor Geeky. And I will say this is one that kind of has a little bit of an asterisk on it. Of course, getting booted out of that fifth game. His production isn't going to look as great because he basically didn't play in that last game where he got suspended. You can see he got two goals, one assist, three points in five games. I will say he was a lot more noticeable than a player like Savoy. And you could see just how much he was trying, especially physically, to make an impact. And that is admirable. But I also think at the same time, considering he was coming into this tournament as the guy, as the first line center, you couldn't have a worse performance than that. Given the opportunity, given the stature of Gigi's play as well this year in the WHL, where he's been absolutely dominant, it's just been brutal to watch. And then we go to Matthew Poitra, which we made a whole video about the Poitra loan to Canada and how big of a deal I thought it was. But he was pretty irrelevant in this tournament, in my opinion, which is sad because he had been such a solid pro at Boston and was looking so good at the NHL level. Maybe he's just checked out a junior play completely. But you can see two goals, two assists, four points in five games. I think it's honestly better production than Poitra was deserving of. You could still see some flashes, some moments here and there, but he was not nearly as dominant as I thought he should have been. A lot more reserved, a lot more quiet, a lot more patient, but kind of in the worst ways. And I think Poitra especially who was loaned onto this Canadian team. Sure, he didn't get much of a training camp, didn't get much of a preparation coming into the tournament, but he should have been much better, and especially given the ice time as well, should have been a much more consistent player for Canada. Should have been a much better scorer too. And then we go on to the defense, which I think was also really hurt, of course, by the injuries to Tanner Molendyke, as well as Tristan Luneau. I think especially you know, Luneau was a player that was sorely missed with his skating and the physical play that he was able to bring. And that was really a big injury for Canada to a defense that already wasn't looking amazing but I will say, I think they still played a little bit better than I was expecting. Maverick Lamaru, I would say, is the standout out of those guys. A player that, of course, coming in, we know the skating pedigree there and the size. But I think offensively looked pretty solid, even though there were some defensive lapses here and there. But I would say he was Canada's best D-man. You got Denton Matejchuk, who offensively, we know what he is. He's going to be pressing. He's going to be doing what he does skating-wise. And he was Denton Matejchuk 
Not really much of a surprise there. You got players like Ty Nelson, who I think in the positions they were in, probably should have been a little bit more dominant offensively. Noah Warren had some rough moments here and there, but I think overall he was just okay. And that's really just a big part of the defense. It's just, it, it was average. It was okay. It got the job done here and there, but wasn't a main standout by any means. And it really needed to be. With the lack of Canada's def offensive depth and the scoring there, they needed the defense to literally be at the best level it's ever been at. And they just weren't capable of that. And then we go on to Canada's starting goaltender in Matisse Rousseau. And it's sad because again, after the first couple of games, he was really looking good for Canada. But at the same time, even in those games, there were a couple of goals that weren't at the greatest level. And I do think some of that size ended up biting him a little bit in the back there. You can see tournament wide, he ended up getting a 9-12 save percentage in five games. But I would say the biggest story of, of his, of the tournament, was just how many goals really shouldn't have been given up. He made some fantastic saves, but also let in some pretty rough ones and goals that just shouldn't have been allowed in rough moments as well. And it was just kind of sad to watch those go in, especially with how many great saves he had made before in all those different games. You know the potential of this guy, but unfortunately wasn't able to completely shut it down when he needed to. And again, that goal where it went off a bonk stick, just a nightmare scenario. And I just feel really bad for him, honestly. I think for a 5'11 undrafted goaltender, he did about as good as he could have in this tournament, in my opinion. I think it is just kind of sad, though, that again, Canada's had to play a 5'11 undrafted goaltender as their starter, and that is the apparent best option for Canada as well. To me, it just shows how bad Canada has gotten with goaltending that it's come up into this situation. The fact that it's happened in like this, I mean, they got bailed out by Milic last year but Russo just was not able to do the same. Now, as an American, I cannot lie, I was heavily rooting for Czechia and really hoping for a win, but I also feel extremely bad for these Canadian players who were just trying their hardest, obviously. And if you go and try to bully them in their Instagram comments, you're weird, stop that. But I do hope this is a pretty major wake-up call for Canada and a wake-up call coaching-wise. I mean, Alan Latang, dude, what are you thinking? This team was coached absolutely horribly. I do believe that you should have gotten more out of players like Savoy, out of Gigi, out of players like Dume. At this level, at this junior level, it's unacceptable the production they were getting in the big moments, in those key opportunities. And you were carried by another 17-year-old again, even more so than last year. At least last year with Bedard, you had Logan Stankoven and Joshua Wah who were playing up to a great level. And that team deserved to win the gold medal because they were so good up front. This year, it was Celebrini and maybe Matthew Wood, maybe a little bit of Carson Rekov, maybe a little bit of Braden Yeager, but nobody outside of Celebrini who was really at that elite offensive level. And that's kind of frightening if you're a Canadian. But I think this game just shows that the World Juniors are the most fun tournament in the world, that games like this can happen, that Czechia can beat Canada, and in regulation too, and all this nuttiness can happen as well. It is the best tournament on earth, man, and it's why we love it so much that things like this can happen in the end, somehow, some way. But we know that Canada will be back on home soil next year, and we'll see if that's able to make a difference. But again, looking at my predictions, I'm not completely happy with them. I'm not completely satisfied since I went Sweden, gold, US, uh, bra uh, silver, and Canada bronze. So obviously, that's not going to end up happening in the end. But I am still kind of proud of myself that I ended up predicting Canada in that bronze position. I know a lot of people still put them at gold or silver or whatever you would have. But I think a lot of us still had lesser expectations of Canada in this tournament. And they certainly met them in the end, didn't they? Well, let me know what you guys thought of Canada's performance in the World Juniors. Was it up to your expectations? Was it below? Was it even above them? How, what did you think about Canada heading in? And what it, were your predictions for it as well? Let us know all your thoughts down below. Also, if you noticed my voice not being up to par, yeah, I've had a little bit of a sore throat, so I'm sorry about that. Try my best to get videos out for you guys, so hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you haven't already, and share the video with all the hockey fans you guys know online. Click on this card as well for all my World Junior content right on one playlist, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, and goodbye.